Good evening, everybody. I hope you're well. Uh, you may have just got a little sneak peek of my next guest, um, which I'm so excited about uh, because we've been trying to hook up uh, in the uh, online way, yeah, stop laughing in the background, Vicky. Uh, in the online way, we've been trying to hook up, not in the physical sense. Uh, motor and journo, racing driver, TV presenter, wife, uh, mother, mate, friends, all round hero of mine. I love it a bit. We uh, uh, we go back a long way, so we've got a lot to talk about. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the one and only Vicky Valenson. Hi! What an intro! Thank you. Get rid of that one. There we go. Look at that. Yay! It's fantastic to have you online, Vicky. It really is. Oh, it's it's lovely to hook up with you. Uh, well. Yes, hook up officially. Uh, so, welcome to my show, Vicky. This is your first time uh, coming on my show. Um, I've had some really good guests in the past, but I've got a funny feeling this is going to be the funniest one uh, that we've had because uh, I can remember Vicky. Yeah. When me and you first met each other, it's probably, I don't want to say how many years, but let's let's not say years, let's say decade. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going back probably two decades ago. Um, I, I kind of think it maybe was the Toyota Celica launch in... Yes. Somewhere like Spain. Yeah, I'm thinking Spain. I'm thinking Spain. So it's yeah. Spain, uh, and uh, we met each other. You were doing fifth gear. I oh, know Top Gear or fifth gear back then. Top mm. gear it was. I think it was Top Gear. Top Gear, and I was doing yes. a Driven. Yeah. Back then, and then we met each other, and I remember being at the bar having a few shandies, and us looking across the room, going, "Look at the, the old crusty journalists. Look at those. They're the old ones." And now we're the old ones. <laughs> I, I like to think that I'm um, sort of a Peter Pan kind of person. Yeah, you are. I go with that. I go with that. I'm, I'm only saying that because um, I recently uh, got invited to a car thing, you know, with with journos that they invited down, and I I was the oldest person there. I walked in there, and everyone everyone had um, skinny jeans and baseball caps on and beards, and, and uh, you know, people turned up on their bicycles and that kind of stuff. <laughs> What the it has gone on? What's gone on in my life? It's just, it's gone so fast. Everything's gone so fast. Do you feel like that? It's, it's just flown by. Oh, without a shadow of a doubt. It, the decades just seem to whiz by because, you know, I started this car journey, racing aside, I started the sort of uh, journalist side on a magazine. And I feel that I've just, uh, yeah, that was only a couple of years ago. It is, it does. It does get, kind of feel crazy, doesn't it? It feels. But crazy. Mike, we've got so many more decades ahead of us, and so well, many yeah, more cars. A, so. yeah, see, I love that. That's a that's a nice way to say it. we have got decades in front of us. So let's talk about the past very quickly and uh, get through that because there's so much to talk about now and the future with you. Uh, so for the past, um, you started. I've got a little picture of your first car here. This was a good one because we. I've met this car. I've met this car. And I've had this car on stage at the NEC. Yes. And, uh, and this is, I like the number plate. Uh, yeah. yeah right? Well, so this was Granny's car, a Mark I Fiesta. It was uh, not, what was it? How many cc is it? I mean, not even a thousand, 957 cc. And, and it was just been in the family ever since 1978. And then a few years ago, I was contacted by a magazine and they said you know would you like us to help restore it I was like yes please so you know, she went from sort of being tucked away in the back of a barn to actually you know being driven it was wonderful really made me, yeah really made me cry I was so excited because it, I remember being a kid in the back of it you know granny taking me off to the seaside oh with the checkered seats oh it was brilliant Fantastic. And yeah. I remember uh, the emotion of seeing it put together at the NEC over those few days and uh, how it looked at the end. And I know that um, the Practical Classics team did a did an amazing job restoring it. And uh, it was kind of emotional up on the stage there at the end when, mm. when you were reunited with the car just in pristine condition. It's wonderful. It was. It was such a, you know, my granny was so special to me. She's sadly no longer with it, but it, you know, it was such a, you know, childhood memories like that that are encapsulated in four wheels is just so special. You'll always remember the, the car that your parents had or that granny had. Yeah. So that, that was really lovely. And also what was super special is because I used to be a staff writer on Practical Classics magazine. So for me then to be involved in the magazine from a different perspective was really lovely. So on every level, it just ticks so many boxes for 
me. It was, uh, it was super. Fantastic. And well, then you were there. So and then I, yeah. <laughs> and then let me just think, right? Okay, so you got you got nine hundred and fifty seven. CCs under your right foot, which I think was probably about 65 horsepower or thereabouts, probably yeah. more than that, under your right foot. And somehow you converted that into either you had to wring its neck to go everywhere and that converted you into some kind of racing driver or you just sort of fell into racing by pure accident. What happened? Well, it was before then. So at the age of 12, I started racing. So that barn actually is... The, the barn opposite my part of the farm that I grew up in. So I spent many hours in that barn where the fiesta was, including where I, I used to have my all my carts in there. All my carts. I mean, I only had one. Oh. <laughs> all my carts. Oh, I had all my carts, my horses, my ponies. <laughs> no, I meant racing carts. Is that, there's an E-type in the background. Yeah, so Dad loves to fettle with cars. He's a really clever engineer as well. So, um, yeah. He's uh, uh, he he his love of cars is, is is what helped me because he was in the British racing team when he was a teenager in karting and he then had an old cart chassis at the farm and I used to go up and down the lane in it on, with a lawnmower engine and when I got to about the age of 12 I said to dad I think you know we I'm old enough to race now because you had to be 12 to race so we went to my local kart track Rye House, Hoddesdon, Hertfordshire where um, Lewis Hamilton, it was his local track as well, but many years later, um, and just started racing. So I've, I've been racing from 12 to 17, and then at 17 I took my driving test, and then that's when I knocked around in Granny's Mark 1 oh, Fiesta. that's fantastic. So you're already going quite fast by the time you got 65 horsepower under your right foot. That, that, was, that was quite tame, actually, I, quite I frankly. Just, you, know, you know I'm a car whisperer. I talk to cars. I talk to cars, right? I'm a car whisperer. I just feel so sorry now for the little Fiesta, because that little Fiesta when you gave it up, that little car was like, <laughs> <laughs> thank God, thank God. And I bet when it was reunited with you back at the NEC, it was going, <laughs> get, rid of, what the, get rid of her. But you know, the wonderful thing about driving a car that's that's not that powerful is you have to be so smooth to, and you need to keep the momentum all the time. So it's a, a really interesting way of driving with not much power, which I, I enjoy that. Just, no, not quite as much like a, as a V10 or a V12, but... <laughs> but there almost, is, but almost. Yeah, almost. Almost. Yeah. It's, I've got a little, uh, you know, I've got, uh, like me and you, we're Porsche obsessed, and I've got a, uh, a little 912 Porsche. Ooh, and I sweet. absolutely love driving it, because you can't drive it like a 911 and wring its neck and, you know, flat out around about. This little thing, you have to drive a little bit more delicately, and it, and it, it actually is a nicer way to drive, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, a wicked thing. So I've got uh, a lovely picture of you here. Look at young Ricky there. Oh, <laughs> where was that? Let me pull that up full screen. <laughs> stunning. So I, there I say, stunning. And not changed the dot since then, have you? How old are you there? That was, I was just, I didn't have any children. So that was probably about 12 years ago, I think. Wow. That yeah. is fantastic. And dare I say, woof on the Ferrari. Oh, so, double, yeah. double woof on the Ferrari. Yeah, that's an F430, isn't it? It is, yes. So I managed to race one thanks to the wonderful team that's called FF Corsa. And they're based at Silverstone. And they still have a, a Ferrari team today. So I raced in a couple of GT Cup races in that car against identical cars and Porsche 911s and I ended and it was at Brands Hatch one race I came second one race I came third didn't quite make it to the top of the podium but oh my gosh racing a wow. Ferrari yeah, yeah racing a Ferrari I've, I've raced I've raced Challenge Stradales 360 Challenge Stradales out in Monza and uh, yeah so I know what that feeling feels like but I never come home with a pot and you came home with not one pot but two pots Oh yes, I did. Honestly, really. I'm mean, even thinking about it now. Just makes me so oh, happy. That's fantastic. Oh, just just the the power, the noise, the ability to you know just to hug the corners. You then, as if one exotic Italian <laughs> car brand wasn't enough, you then go. I know what I've done. Ferrari. Let's do the Maserati. Maserati. Let's go racing the Maserati. 
So this is the 3200 GT. So this was in a one one mate championship and it was at Silverstone. It was 2004 and the Grand Prix was happening that day. So we were a support race for the Grand Prix and you have to have two drivers in it. So I teamed up with a brilliant driver called Matthew Marsh and between the pair of us, we won the race. So we were there on top step of the podium, spraying and literally got covered in champagne. By the way, champagne stinks. stinks. It stings your eye and it Hello. stinks on your over. Oh, it is well, a nasty smell. I, I always I, drink it. Always drink it. I hosted the uh, the British Rally Championship for 11 years with Robbie Head. Mm. And uh, of course, I'm there at the winner's podium on every race. And it became a thing to get Mike, you know, so every single race, they would not to play teammate, uh, they would just cover me in champagne. And you ended up, if you're, I don't know, if you're in York and then the rally's over, I could get in the car, driving home, yeah, in, a, on, in the winter, you have to put the heating up uh, and you're driving home and you smell like odd bins. It's like I've just been dumped at the back of odd bins. And the last thing you need to do is stop and fill up with fuel and then go and pay for fuel because people just like, I'm calling the police. This person has been Absolutely. Drinking. Yeah, I always thought if the if the police stop me, I am in so much trouble. You know, I'm in so much trouble. I just smell like odd bin. And, <laughs> So then you've got the you've got the racing career. Um, oh, hello. Vicky's just disappeared, but I gather Vicky's going to come back. This happened earlier. It would be a little technical issue. It's where uh, Vicky's going to join me again. See, I'll show you. I'll tell you what it is, Vicky. We haven't got um, – it's the – you just haven't got the high definition broadband or whatever it is. I have got super-duper broadband usually, so I don't know. My internet's usually – broadcast quality <laughs> oh, really? but it clearly talking to you you're zapping so much power power that's what me. it is yeah that is exactly what it is it's all the power coming from me i wish uh so vicky you're not only uh so you're now racing cars at that point you're tv presenting because at that point you're doing you're a journalist and i believe back then oh yeah definitely 12 years ago you would have been doing way been doing top gear uh, by then, so you've been presenting Top Gear, and in between all of that stuff, Top Gear, then you did Fifth Gear, now you're doing the car years, which we'll talk about in a minute, um, you're teaching other celebrities how to drive. Um, yeah. So this is James Martin, the chef, yes. and I and he did be... to cook. No, he didn't cook me anything afterwards. You, you can get one back on him. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Um, I'd been a racing instructor at Silverstone since I was 17. So I've been teaching people how to go around a racing circuit as quickly as they possibly can. So I really enjoy teaching people. And James Martin came on fifth gear and the producers decided that they would have a Mercedes SLS. And to give it a sort of chefy theme, they would put a really sharp long knife um, onto the bonnet of the car. So it was sticking out by about a foot and a half, horizontally, so you could cut. And then I had to go around an apex at Rockingham Racing Circuit, hit the apex, which had on it a road cone, and on the road cone was a cucumber sticking upwards to the sky. And with the knife, I had to come on a power slide, slide and cut the cucumber in half mid power slide. I have never done this before. Is that something that you have done before? No, but I can remember watching it back then and thinking... That's that's kind of a it was phallic and you're cutting it and uh, b I thought wow that's going to take some skill and uh, that's you know if you're thrown in at deep end as a presenter and said go do this and that's happened to me in the past with things like and because and, everyone around you thinks oh they can do it Vicky of course Vicky can power slide with a sword on the back of her car a slice of cucumber for a gin and tonic of course Vicky can do it yeah. Exactly. That was the thing. I had had no practice, as you say, in at the deep end. So James Martin's there in the morning, comes out and, and I'm like, hi, James. I'm going to teach you how to do this. First of all, let me show you how it's done. <laughs> anyway, I managed it on number six. Number six run, I, ma I nailed it. And it was a mega shot. It was a proper shot. I remember saying it's all in super slow-mo, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. So I was just, I mean, I was beyond excited about doing it. And then it, we took pretty much the whole day to then teach James how to do it. He was, you know, the, the car wasn't, 
he was just kinking the end out and not getting close enough. And then, then there was a tiny nick of the cucumber and, and then there was nothing. And honestly, and he was getting more and more frustrated because it's just, it's just cutting a, a cucumber, which he does all, he could do it blindfold all the time. normally in his kitchen. So it was hilarious and he did manage it in the end. <laughs> it was a long day. He managed it probably, it was a shot that they use of you cutting <laughs> <laughs> no, give him a back on him, old James. You need to get him now telling you how to, you know, uh, do a proper Sunday roast. Yeah. You know, whatever it is. I don't know. But uh, yeah, nice guy. Uh, I like James. Got a lot of time for him. He's good. Yeah. And, and he's a real. Picture, he's very tall. He is I... very tall and he's getting you to sniff his armpit, which is a bit weird. <laughs> um, You then talk current Top Gear host. I know. How bizarre is that? Uh, well, Freddie yeah. Flinter. So Freddie's the one in the pink shirt, a pink jumper, and I'm the one in the cricket gear. So it should actually, we, we didn't swap clothes. We did actually arrive looking like that. Um, and this is the wonderful crew that, that we've had for fifth gear, one of the wonderful crew. Anyway, that was at Alton Park racing circuit and we were in a boxster, Porsche boxster. And so I was teaching him how to go around. And he was, he, he, he really did begin to get it. And then he got to a point where I was like, now you need to practice on your own because I need to take myself out of this potential dangerous Crash. situation. Yes, he got he's wired up wrong. <laughs> he's wired up brilliantly. He is wired up brilliantly, but he, not to be a passenger. He's, he's wired up brilliantly, but brilliantly wrong. I mean, when you see him get bungee jumped in a car off of the dam, and then what was it? I still can't believe me and you have been presenting TV shows for decades, and you switch on Top Gear these days. And they're getting towed in bloody boots behind cars up a runway at 90 miles an hour. And I'm going, who's what's the insurance company? How's that been signed off? Who done that? How, oh, how does that work? Daddy Mike. That conversation happened in an office where they go, Mike and Vicky got this really good idea. What we're going to do is going to tow you behind cars up a runway. We're going to get to 90 miles an hour. Oh, by the way, you're in biker's gear and just still boots on. It just... What well, happened? I, I have to confess, I have had on some ski boots, uh, ski boots, ski uh, skis, and then I got towed down a little grass verge by a motorbike. I was on the, I was, what? On, yeah, there was a rope, then a motorbike, then me, and I got towed down, it's around the back of the NEC, there's a, like a pond there, right? So the plan was for me to go down this little grass bank, I mean, the, the bike zoomed right off. I managed to get down the grass managed to get onto the water because the, I, and then i my skis just dug in and i just went a over t and went and went all the way down and I remember, and, and twisted my knee to a certain extent as well afterwards is this on camera yeah did the director go can we do that again no he didn't <laughs> he saw the look on my face <laughs> We're not doing that one again. No, exactly. uh, I, was, no. I, I came out, I was just covered in whatever had been at the bottom of the lake. And, oh, it's funny. <laughs> so, yeah, I think I, maybe I'm not quite wired right either. No, I don't think you are, Vicky. I've <laughs> seen some of the events stuff you've done, and I don't think you are. So then, um, so we've spoke about uh, uh, teaching people how to drive. But then, woof, oh, I like this. This is, your, we this is your current squeeze, isn't it? Well, it was. Oh, you sold it? <sighs> yes so, let me just let me just indulge my myself with this car before i tell the sad story of it departing me but yeah so that porsche came and gt4 wowza when porsche said that this car was happening i was like oh yes i'll definitely have a bit of this not as not as you know high-end money wise as a 911 and i was like, yeah i really fancy a bit of this so i went and i specced it the uh, first and only car i'll probably ever have brand new specking a car is so much fun because i went into the dealership thinking Do you know what <clears throat> porsche have spent millions researching this i'm just gonna have it basic Whatever Porsche have said, I'll just take it like that. And then I got into the ship and he's like, you want sat-nav with that? And I'm like, oh, actually, resale value. Yeah, sat-nav would be good. Yeah. Ching, sat -nav. Yeah. You want the, uh, you know, the fancy calipers? <laughs> yeah, of course I do. Yep, I like yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> and before you know it, I'm like 15, 20 grand in. <laughs> yes. <laughs> just it's on options. Called, it's called Porsche tax. <laughs> That's what it's called. It's called Porsche tax. I know I've just gone through it with my car when you sit there and all the, yeah. oh, that's the base price. Do you know what? I think I've worked hard enough. I could, I deserve that. I think I can make that work. Hello, my accountant. Can I make this? Well, yeah, go on. You go for it. 
Try yeah. not to spend any more, but you go for it. Yeah. I mean, you go, well, I've got to have, you know, just a sunroof, uh, the panoramic roof. Got to have that. You know, I've got a nice car. Got to have a... So you've got to have that. Oh, I don't want the 19-inch wheels. Can I have the 20-inch wheels? And then I want the red calipers. I don't want the other calipers. I want the red caliper. And then by the time it all touched up, I'd spent 25 grand more than the car. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. But do well, you know what? It was worth every penny. Every penny. Oh, Porsche every penny. Pack. Porsche okay. tap. I love it. So where's that car now? You obviously can't fit the kiddies in the back of that one. Which is exactly what happened. <laughs> so as, as many, I, I did many lovely miles in it by myself. Oh, oh poor Vicky. She's gone again. But we've got the picture of Vicky up here on screen, leaning over that lovely GT4. She's ready. She's back. Oh, go on, carry on talking. I like it, Vicky. You can carry on talking. You know, children don't go in a two-seater car. It's just Leave not... them. Put them well, on the I thought about a roof rack and everything. Just stick them up there. But in, so in the end, it, it had to go very, very sadly. Very well, sadly. What's on the driveway today? Don't tell me it's like a Vauxhall Severa. I'm going to... I'll switch this off. If it's, what is it? Right now, today, yes. for four days only, yes. I've got a Lamborghini... Hurricane Evo rear wheel drive hover oh. to the hover. Oh, yeah. oh yes. That is hairy, larry, yeah. noisy, awesome. Wow, that's uh <sighs> yeah. It's tucked up in the garage and I've I've walked away from it going, survive the day. <laughs> yeah, lovely. Nice one. Nice one. Nice one. This is gonna be this is one for review of which we're we get to so there's two two things or three things that you're currently doing because you're oh, as yes. busy as ever you're you're as busy as ever number one is and i'm pleased to have done it with you you're the queen of auto express oh my darling <laughs> and you've got this uh weekly podcast on on auto express which is phenomenal you had me on as a guest yeah and, great guest. Uh, it's so much fun it's it's great as well because auto express i've written for auto express for years in the past and it is that weekly news gathering of what's happening and what's great in the motoring world. Uh, some of those, uh, the new car launches or news stories or what's happening in the marketplace. Uh, so you fill your podcast with that kind of information. Yeah, absolutely. Every Wednesday we talk about what's in that Wednesday's magazine and we have some fantastic guests. We've got journalists as well on the mag. We've had you on, which has been fantastic. We've had Dario Franchitti. We have had, oh, we've got uh, Sir Chris Hoy coming up. He's, yeah, he's great. Oh he's... yeah, honestly, all sorts. Nick Mason, drummer from Pink Floyd. No, Anyone who's got an interest in cars, yeah. we've, we've managed to have on, which has been awesome. And it is such a lovely thing to do because every week there's news stories about cars or consumer issues to delve into so it's it's huge fun i really enjoy doing it and i used to be a road tester on auto express magazine so for me it's lovely to you know to be connected again in that way yeah it's lovely isn't it and i love listening to it every week because i get my motoring news in a in a you know because i, I live a frantic life and uh, part of my frantic life is this commute that I have to get to work. And in that commute, I can stick on a podcast and I can listen, yeah. uh, listen to you and listen to Steve Fowler. And I can, I can get my motoring news that week. And then I kind of, and I'm not saying it to be facetious and, and puff smoke up your ass, but, <laughs> Please do. I, but I will do. But I kind of then use that sort of motoring news through the week. You know, people go, oh, yeah, have you seen that, you know, uh, Jaguar Land Rover has stopped making cars at the minute because there's no compute chips. And I think, oh, yeah, I'm going to tell you all about it. Wait <laughs> one second. I'm just going to mail through you in with all the information I just gathered in the car on my way in from Vicky. Brilliant. Brilliant. Great, isn't it? So that's what's the lovely thing about podcasts is you can have them in the car on on your dog walk. You, know, it's, you can't right. read a newspaper or a magazine yeah. right then and there. In your ears, brilliant. So, where can people find that podcast, Vicky? So, that is on all your podcast platforms, and it's just the Auto Express podcast. I urge Every people Wednesday. to go and subscribe to it. Please go and subscribe oh. to it. Not only is it uh, enlightening because it's fun and it's not taken too seriously; it's it's delivered in a in a fun, uh, good way. You'll get all your motor news plus inside information, uh, and it really is a is a cracker. So, I love that. Thank you. Thank you, thank and then, you. And then the next thing you've got going on, so you've got a podcast. Obviously, you're a you're a wife 
uh, you're also a, a mother and uh, you're a friend to lots of other people. So you've got a busy social life. Uh, but in amongst all this stuff, you've got another series of the brilliant car years coming up with Alex. Alex yes. Riley. Alex Riley. Hello. Alex Riley. I'm Alex Riley. The tallest presenter I've ever presented with, and I am five foot five and a half, which I think is a pretty good it's height. A, it's a decent height. Yeah, decent. But he just makes me look like a tiny little person. Um, so Alex and I pick a car from a specific year, and then we champion that car. So we sort of, you know, arrivals really. And then at the end of the show, once we've told the wonderful story about how it came into being, and we always have some great archive footage and bits of just lovely stories that, you know, that even if you're not a massive car fan, it sets the social scene of, of what was happening then. And then at the end of it, there are some judges and they decide which car should be the best car of that specific year. Um, I um, also get to dress up. In, well, yes. we both get to dress up in whatever year costume it Period is. Period clothing. I flipping love that. I, I bet you do. It's the dressing up box, isn't it? It's <laughs> wonderful. I, I love it. And I've been a huge fan, and we spoke about it several times on the stage at the NEC, um, because it's that bit of social history that you get from cars gone by, you know, and it's the bit that some TV programmes uh, forget. They forget to tell about the social history, the people around it, the people who built it, uh, the people who drove them back in the day. Rather than just talk about the car, here's a Mini Cooper, isn't it great? Rather than just talk, it's all about the Mini Cooper and around the Mini Cooper and Twiggy and it's all of those kind of things, you know, and it's yeah. that real history that I love and it's I dive into it when I'm watching it uh, with you and Alex. So that's coming back. When's that going to be on? So that should hopefully be out in the early summer. So we have filmed that. So that Already? Was, yeah. So oh. I've, I've been in a Citroen 2CV, a Mark 1 Range Rover, a um, uh, Subaru P1. I've had, oh my gosh, we, we go all through through the years. So the Citroen <laughs> CCV, you drove across a farmer's ploughed field with a box of eggs. No, but what I did have to do... has done that. Yeah, no, we didn't do that. But what I did have to do was heel and toe the whole time because if that engine died, it was not going to start again. <laughs> so at every... And when you're filming, you have to go past the camera, turn around, come back past the camera, turn around. And trying to do that in a 2CV and, and keeping... You know, and I'm sort of going on different hill gradients and what have you, and just trying to keep the throttle going whilst on the brakes and getting the gear right to turn out. Oh my goodness! And dressed in 1948 gear with a with like a big fur like stool around me. Oh my goodness! And a hat. <laughs> it was I can't fun. Wait. I can't wait. I did a I did a two CV on Wheeler Dealers many years ago. 19. 19- yeah. Yeah, so it's an early one. Yeah. And uh, sold it to Andrew Frankel, who's the motoring journalist. Motoring journalist, then of the uh, the Sunday Times. And I sold it to Andrew Frankel, and he turned up in a McLaren P1 to come and do the deal. <laughs> and he said, I'm more excited about buying this 1958 uh, 2CV than I am about reviewing this P1. Wow. Uh, it goes to yeah. show you what those cars yeah. can do to people. Honestly, it's. It, it... I spent a whole day with with Blanche, is her name. She's got it written oh. on Blanche. And just just fell in love because it, she had so much character. Yeah, that's you the know? point. Yeah. Oh, that's the brilliant. point. That's what I love about those old cars. They have got a, they've got, got a personality. You know, yeah. it's the one thing that we're missing today. You know, cars you get in them, they're pretty numb. They I have got... to say that this this Lambo that I've got. You've got her personality? Uh, and some. Yeah, like a... Let's summarise it. Is it a um, ball mastiff or is it a terrier? It's like a little terrier. Oh, no. This no? is like you know, right? Tom Selleck, the actor yeah. who's at Magnum PI. If he could turn himself like hairy chested, yeah, pin up, yeah. If he yeah. could turn himself into some metal, I reckon That's that would car. be him. Like it, like it. Yeah. Even I fancy it now. <laughs> Even I fancy it. Right. So we, we we've. Now got the exciting news, and this is the, the really exciting news. And I can't wait to put this little graphic up on the screen because uh, it's so cute. I bloody love it. And whoever done this for you, genius. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Vicky has now got her own YouTube channel. <laughs> car girl, Vicky Butler Henderson. And I just love that little picture. Who done that? So well, this is a great company that I, I found. and They're also doing my website, actually. So they... I wanted the helmet design and then they sort of came up with that. But it's so uncannily like me. It's even got my, my parting correct. 
It's really, well, really it's sweet. So nice for kids. So, so, nice. so I'm so excited because there's lots of people out there who are non-car journalists who have literally turned themselves into car journalists by basically getting a GoPro, walking out onto a dealer's forecourt, asking for a test drive, testing a car with a GoPro on, pumping it up on YouTube and literally turning themselves into influencers and car journalists where you are a genuine car journalist. Genuine. Genuine car journalist who's made a living out of it. <laughs> now got your own YouTube channel reviewing cars. Yeah. I'm so excited to do it. It's such a daunting thing. Doing anything new is always daunting. So to sort of take the plunge and go, do you know what? I'm, I'm so passionate about driving cars. I love reviewing them. I I just, I have so much enthusiasm and that I just want to share. And that some people will never get the chance to drive a Lamborghini. I know that. I, I rarely do. But when I have got the opportunity to do or a Ferrari or a Maserati. I just want to share that experience so that you sort of come on board with me and, and feel like you've, you've had a, a drive in one. So the YouTube channel is something, you know, quite exciting. And so far I've had amazing support from everybody. It's been so lovely just to, to have that. It's particularly in these, you know, rather dull times that we've all had in the last year or so just to, feel some warmth and some support from everybody it's been so uplifting it's been fantastic well, it can't it can't not succeed vicky it's got you. <laughs> and and your first one i was looking at the first one and i've actually got a little clip so we're going to play a little clip for the audience oh. um and i thought well there's a, there's a way to go girl i mean don't muck about don't come on there with that little <laughs> just go hit the hit the show running let me get rid of uh hit the show running with a bloody ferrari f8 Tributo. I mean, seriously, you just didn't like about did you? You just went for it. Ferrari have been so amazingly kind. So they said, look, you know, we should I be quiet here? No, talk over it if you want. Look at this, this is the intro. Look how good the intro is. Boom! We're in! <laughs> We're in! Vicky is on, look at that! Big aerial shot to start with. A wonderful Welcome to, husband to the first before. film on the YouTube <laughs> channel. And what better, better way to kick things off? Yeah, let's shut up and just watch it. Fabulous, fabulous spicy, spicy, and begins, and begins with, with the letter, letter S. Ferrari. Ferrari. Let's, Let's start, start with, with a story. story. Are you sitting, sitting comfortably? Then, then we will begin. We will begin. Ferrari, Ferrari has a long history in making sports cars, cars but it was the 355 that really resonated with me. It was, it was 1994, I was a motoring journalist, and, and this beautiful, beautiful Ferrari, Ferrari was big, big news. news. Then, then things got better. The 360 was better to drive. The 430 was more usable. The, the 458 was brilliant at everything, and the, and the 488, which added turbos to the mix, mix for better, better fuel economy. economy. But, but what, what happened next? next? The F8 Tributo. As its, As its name suggests, well, this, this car, car is, is a tribute, tribute to the engine, the engine that lies, lies under, under there. there. Beneath, Beneath that lightweight... Enough for the audience. <laughs> Enough. Don't give it all away. Jesus. I want teasers. I want them to be able to go immediately once they finish watching this. They're immediately going to rush onto the YouTube platform and they are going to look up what's the name? It's the Car Girl Vicky Butler Henderson. The Car Girl Vicky Butler Henderson. It is absolutely mega. Look at those production values. Yeah. I mean, it's proper production values, I know. I was so, so lucky. Not only did Ferrari come on board and say, look, here's a car. Would you like it to launch your channel with? Yes, please. Thank you, Ferrari. And then also they organised Thruxton Racing Circuit. So we had half a day at the track. And then my husband is the series director for the Grand Tour. And he used to be the series director for Top Gear. So he has got a wealth of knowledge when it comes to making beautiful films. And he's also got um, access to some incredibly talented, you know, cameramen, drone operators. So just for this super special launch of mine, he pulled in lots of favours and, and has come up with, with this amazing film. So And it was so great and so lovely that I've put it into two parts. So part one is out now, part two is coming very soon. And um, But then after that, hopefully the production values 
all stay the same, but we don't have the big crew that we have, you know, going forwards. But hopefully once in a while we can do some big, big crew stuff. Vicky, I'm so proud. It's such an amazing thing to watch. It really is. Mm -hmm. uh, I worked with my husband many, many years ago, so uh, uh, we've got a bit of a history, and I know just how talented he is. And mm -hmm. uh, it just looks amazing, Vic. I mean, it just looks incredible. It's, it's, you know, people uh, have to buy a TV license or people have to have a subscription to go on to a service to go and watch good car content. Uh, my channel, you know, Discovery Channel and and uh, Motor Trend and people like that, you have to pay for it. But when you can switch on to YouTube and go into the car girl, Vicky Butler Henderson, and get that quality, that content for nothing, is just amazing. It is I wish you every success with it, Vicky. I really do. I think it's going to be a. I think it's going to be a knockout. It oh, would. thank you, thank you so much. I just, I'm so passionate about driving that you know, whilst fifth gear is not on the air at the moment, I, I need an outlet. <laughs> As if you haven't got enough to do. I mean, you've got the well, podcast, you've got the mother, you've got the car years, uh, you've got everything else going on, but you just have to cram that in as well. I know it's a lot of juggling. Like you, Mike, you've juggled so much in your life. Crikey! Yeah, but I'm still struggling to pay my bills, Vic. <laughs> <laughs> shouldn't buy so many cars that's a problem, oh, no. it? i know i've got to stop buying cars yeah stop buying. i've become i keep having to buy buildings that are ever bigger buildings yeah now, now i'm just i've it's got the pa paperwork as well the paperwork it's, it's it's mot's insurance oh I'm, yeah i mean my drawer here i've right yeah my one of the drawers in my desk with my, uh, you know, my log books in it and whatever. Yeah. It's now become, not a drawer, it's become the desk. So it's on this <laughs> one and that side. And I look and I go, shit, it's all car stuff. Everything's car stuff. There's nothing else in there. In fact, I can pick up this computer and show you. <laughs> every, every, all my bills and normal correspondence is on the floor. Everything's on the yeah. floor. And the car stuff's housed in the desk drawer. That's the way it is. Everything. Um, oh, no. It's... It, uh, Vicky, don't ever change. Just keep oh, doing what you're doing. Thanks. I love you to bits. You're absolutely fantastic. Um, let's just give a big, big shout out to uh, where people can go and tap in to you across all forms of social media so they can keep in touch with oh, you. So yes. where, where are you on Facebook? Facebook is a no-go. I've never done Facebook. Don't, because it's okay. full of people that don't like people okay. uh, where are you on twitter twitter i'm at vb underscore h right at vb underscore underscore h. yeah you remember that everyone uh, where are you on instagram the youthful one vicky butler henderson lovely love it that's nice and simple yeah and now this amazing platform the new channel uh, where can people find you one more time on youtube the car girl vicky butler henderson so make sure you go to the car girl, you hit the little bell, which is the uh, the like thing, and then subscribe. Make sure you subscribe because uh, you don't want to miss part two because you will get a notification when part two of the F8 comes up if you subscribe. And that won't happen unless you do that. And Vicky deserves our dis subscriptions. So make oh, sure you can do it, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Vicky, uh, good luck, darling. Good luck with everything. Um, can't wait to hang out with you again. I know. I need a cuddle. I need a proper cuddle. Oh, yeah. It's coming. I've had, yeah. me, I've had me jabs and all of that. You know, I'm, I'm at that age where I've had me jabs. <laughs> I've just uh, had the we, one. Uh, and we can't wait to uh, to get back out there. And uh, if you need a little, you know, ride in a drive uh, with moi uh, for a I don't know, something for your YouTube channel? Oh, yeah. I, I'm coming for you, big boy. I'm coming. Please, please. It'd be nice. It'd be lovely. <laughs> thank, you, thank you, darling. Oh, thank you so much. And thank you to everyone for watching and listening. And thank you for everything. Stay uh, safe. Be happy. Stay safe, be happy. And there you go, everyone. That was Vicky Butler Henderson. She is bloody amazing. Make sure you go and subscribe to her YouTube channel. Make sure you go and follow her on Instagram and on Twitter. Uh, you'll be doing me a favour as well. In the meantime, I'm going to be back soon with some more guests. Hope you enjoyed that show tonight. It was great fun, wasn't it? Wasn't it just amazing to have Vicky on? And uh, look forward to seeing you all soon. Ta-da! 